Hello everyone. Welcome back to Carmine Teaches Photography. This is photo class number 62 live from New York City. Welcome back. Let's learn photography. Wow, we've had some week. Um, I put out two on location videos with the photographs uh, following each one. Uh, the first one was, if you uh, go back and look, was the Chinatown in uh, Manhattan Lunar New Year, the Chinese New Year Parade in Chinatown. It was a lot of fun. Um, it was a freezing cold day. Uh, this is over on Mott Street in Manhattan in Chinatown. This is just one of the photographs um, with the uh, dragons that they uh, march with and the, the music and I can't tell you enough about the food in Chinatown how unbelievable it is it's just delicious right and the Chinese bakeries and on and on and on unreal so uh, it was a great day uh, there was I counted over 35 photographers just on my block and don't forget this parade is like uh, two miles long uh, but I like the spot that I was on. I'm, I'm on this little corner on Mott Street because the parade comes right towards you. Let me hold up another one, another photograph, a little different. Uh, the parade, these are the, uh, I don't know, I'm going to guess the beauty queens of the parade. I could be completely wrong, but uh, that's what they, it looks like to me. But anyway, on this turn, on this turn on Mott Street, um, they come right towards you and then they turn right into the sun. So you get some very good light. All right, this day I shot with the Nikon F4, the 85 millimeter prime uh, 1.4 D lens and uh, had a great time with it. Uh, I never felt uh, it was too, too uh, telephoto or uh, I never felt uh, it was too wide. I felt for that corner that I was at, I felt that it was a, a great um, focal length. I often say you should shoot with a 28 or or a 24 or a 35 millimeter for these parades. But I've been there five or six years in a row, except when they were canceled because of the uh, pandy. Um, I know this corner extremely well. I've, I've stood in that spot each parade. I kind of mark out my territory. And uh, what's funny is when I get there, there's there's no other photographers uh, there yet because I get there like an hour early. And uh, what happens by the time the parade starts, there's five people deep behind me, mostly tourists. And uh, it was interesting. I was photographing the parade and, of course, I'm shooting film and... Uh, when I was doing a, uh, this is, a, by the way, I forgot to say, uh, in the Nikon F5, I was shooting uh, Kodak uh, 400 speed color film. Uh, so as I'm shooting and as I'm changing roles, uh, you know, the way you do it is you take out the one roll. I put it, you know, in my mouth, take out, because you can't move. You, you're, you're crushed on both sides, right? You, there's a railing in the front and there's people back, so you, you're working in a tight spot. So I put the, the roll in my mouth, put the fresh roll in, and behind me I hear a foreign language that I didn't understand, but I understood one word, film. So it was bop, 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 film, bop, bop, bop. So I turned, and the older male in the group uh, said, looked at me, and I go, yeah, it's film. So he started to laugh because he figured out I knew what he was talking about. And uh, he says, oh, my kids, they never, his children were like, they looked like 18 and 20. He says, my children never saw a film before. I'm like, whoa, that, that was, what an eye opener that was. That generation, they never even saw film, a film camera, somebody loading the film and taking out the film. Wow, that was some, that was uh, something to experience. So anyway, uh, what happened during the day, during the parade, the parade was only like four hours, right? So what happened during the parade, um, don't forget now this is February, 
right, in Manhattan. And besides it being cold, the sun is already, you can see by the shadows, the sun is already low at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. And as the parade went on, the sun basically just started to disappear. So when the sun disappeared, I left. Because, you know, experience tells you there's no sun. You're not going to get the vivid colors that you need, you know, when you're shooting color film. So when the sun left, I left. And I thank goodness because I was frozen solid. So that was the one on location uh, video I made. They're all out there. Just uh, go to my channel. You'll see them all. Then the next one, like two days after that, my next location was I grabbed the uh, panoramic camera, the Minolta P's, and I went down to uh, Atlantic City. You know, maybe I, maybe I did some gambling. I don't remember. And uh, I used the Minolta P's to take some panoramic photographs. So this is also 35 millimeter film. The, the, the Minolta P's, if I remember correctly, has a 24 millimeter lens. And it's just cropped inside the... Uh, inside the camera but like i said i made a whole video about the minolta p so i won't drag it on what it does is it makes you think in horizontal art form right and also with this camera now if you get this is a minolta lens high quality there's no no distortion edge to edge there's no distortion let me just give you one more example All right this is this is my favorite one from uh, this shoot. Uh, if you look at the boardwalk, don't forget now this is February on the boardwalk, by the, right on the coast of the Atlantic Ocean. Freezing, windy. Thank goodness the sun was out. And there's almost no one on the boardwalk except for this one fellow pushing these. These are uh, historical uh, push carts that, People pay a couple of bucks and he'll push you with his hands and feet. He'll push you anywhere you want to go on the boardwalk. And it's about five miles long. So uh, tipping is uh, appreciated. And uh, he'll put as many people I can fit in that little wicker cart. Um, no matter how much, uh, well, let's just say, no matter what the poundage is, he will, as many people I can fit, he'll push you and it's all the same price. So... This is uh, cool. But anyway, getting back to the panoramic camera, right? You can see from one end to the other. It gives your art photographs so much depth. So much depth. You know, it's uh, it, I can't say enough about the camera. It's a little pocket point and shoot. But it's the combination of the way that it, the aspect ratio plus... It's a 24 millimeter lens. I believe it's 24 millimeter lens. Gives you this uh, look. And look at the uh, lamp pole here. No distortion. No distortion. You don't get any of that curvature that you would from, let's say, a fisheye. All right. Okay. So that's, we just caught up now uh, to the two uh, outings, the two photo shoots that I did this week. All right. So. Uh, we're in eight minutes already. Okay, so what I want to talk about today is two topics. One more important than the other. The first one, shout out. Shout out goes to uh, a website called The Art Newspaper. TheArtNewspaper.com. Okay, why? Why are I giving them a shout out? They are highlighting... At least today. Today is uh, February 26, 2022. It's 4 p.m. when I'm taping this right now. And here's why I want to give them a shout out. Uh, they are highlighting the war photographers that are right now in the war zone in the Ukraine. They're highlighting the photojournalists that are right now doing the job of press photographer, war photographer. We haven't heard that word, war photographer, in quite a while. But the war photographers um, are back out. They're in the Ukraine. They're photographing what they have to photograph. 
let me just give you uh, this little brief. Uh, so much misinformation out there right now about what's happening as far as propaganda or what's reality. All right. So this uh, website, um, theartnewspaper.com, what they're doing is they're highlighting the professional associated, or at least this one guy, this Associated Press chief that's out in the Ukraine, or I should say, that's in Ukraine right now. Uh, his name is Emilio Morinati, M-O-R-E-N-A-T-T-I, Emilio Morinati. He is a Pulitzer Prize winning photojournalist. He is the chief Associated Press photographer for Spain and Portugal. When all hell broke loose out in the Ukraine, he put himself in the Ukraine to photograph as a photojournalist, as a war photographer, as a press photographer. He put himself in the situation to show the world on his Instagram and Twitter account the truth of what's happening in real time, not to be misled by any propaganda. This is a photography channel. Let's just get this right. This is not a news. This is not a. This is not any kind of uh, political channel at all. This is my photography channel. So I'm telling you guys about a Pulitzer Prize-winning photojournalist, Emilio Morinati. Go to his Instagram and Twitter account under the same name. Uh, he's the chief Associated Press photographer. Uh, he's been a photojournalist since 1989. He's there now. He's in the Ukraine now photographing what's happening in real time and, and posting it immediately, um, the photo and in a short sentence or two about what he, what's in the photograph, where it is, what's happening. Um, he is being instrumental in this, what's happening right now, February 26, 2022 in Europe. Um, I have a lot of friends over in Europe. Uh, from England and Finland and so on, and well, in Italy, but that's home. Uh, so what's important is his photographs may be the only communication that people will have as far as looking at his photographs with a magnifying glass to see if they see a family member or a friend or a relative uh, because uh, things are getting a little sketchy over there. Okay. Enough. Let's talk about one more subject today. We've gone 13 minutes. Okay, so years ago, I bought this Rolleiflex. Okay, years ago, I bought this Rolleiflex. This is the Rolleiflex with the 3.5 75mm Zeiss Tessar lens. Now, I got this Rolleiflex um, for basically half price of what it was going for then. Now, Rolleiflex with these specifications, the 3.5 Zeiss 75 millimeter test saw lens, they're ridiculous. We're talking 500 and up. All right. So um, if you need the name, Rolleiflex, right? If you need the name, fine. If you don't, you can get a Yashica D for, I don't know, 35%, 40% of what a Rolleiflex costs. Anyway. Let's talk about this camera right now. Uh, so I get this camera for dirt, dirt cheap because of uh, two things. Number one, this button right here, right? This is the self-timer button. Uh, the actual physical chrome metal button was missing. All right. So the seller who was looking to make a quick deal, he... Like I said, if you're buying from a seller that has 100% feedback, he'll point that out first before he gets into the good stuff, right? He'll go missing the, the uh, self-timer button. But more importantly, by the way, this is just an aftermarket plastic uh, Rolleiflex bayonet mount lens hood. They're dirt cheap if you get the, uh, the aftermarket ones. And you know what? Nobody will know the difference. 
Anyway, so why would, why did I get this so cheap? The lens, not the viewing lens, but the taking lens, okay? The Zeiss lens. Uh, he had a nice close-up photograph of it, and he listed it as the truth. He said, full of fog. He goes, it's not on the exterior. He goes, internal lens fog. Now. I have 49 years as, as a photographer and a lot of you guys also have decades as a photographer and you know what the fog means internally in a lens. It means that the oil that is on the mechanisms for the aperture and the shutter, the oils that were made, that the oils that were put there, the lubricants that were put in there in Germany when the camera was manufactured so many years ago, so many decades ago, has started to evaporate. The lubricant, the oil, the grease, right? There are volatile solvents in it. They start to evaporate, right? Now look at my hand, right? They evaporate and they go up. The gases, right? When water evaporates, right, you get droplets on a cover like in a Tupperware. You take something out of the refrigerator, and in your Tupperware, you take the cover of the Tupperware on the inside of the lid, the water droplets. That's exactly what's happening inside this lens and every lens. The lubricant, the oil, the grease starts to evaporate. The volatile parts start to evaporate. And those particles, the mist, the vapor has to go somewhere. And it stops when it hits the inside of the lens, the glass, the element. Now, I knew for 4.9 decades of being a photographer, I've cleaned many a lens. I've taken many a lens apart. So I said, well, if that's it, I knew that you could buy these parts it was a few bucks, right? You just put in authentic, you Google authentic Roloflex parts, you put in what you need, and there it is. If, it, if they have it, they have it. A few bucks, it came, fit perfectly. So that was nothing. That was a non issue. The lens. Now, some lenses have what they call pits, P I T S. Pits are it, on the lens when you're trying to take it apart, a pit here and a pit on the other side. That's that little groove. It's a little notch where normally your calipers would fit into, right? They would fit in and all you would do is turn the lens and unscrew it, right? I have, over the five decades, I have amassed all different types. These are my favorite. All different types of lens calipers. All right. These are um, very useful, but uh, you have to use extreme care with these. These are heavy, and there's four pieces of stainless steel going every which way. They're useful. Take your time when you're using these. Okay. Anyway, so I have all of these calipers. No good for a roller flex with the Zeiss three, five, 75 millimeter lens on it. Okay. Why? No pits. This lens, when they manufactured it, no pits and it's recessed. So you can't even like just grab it and turn it. So what do you do? Well, you go into your bag of tricks and you find these vacuum pad. Why is it called a vacuum pad? Worst name ever. Okay. What these are, are six different size rubber um, little rings. Okay. And they all nest in, they're extremely, uh, they have a lot of uh, grip. All right. A lot of traction, like rubber tires, right? There's a lot of traction. They have almost no smell, but each one 
is good for two sizes of lenses. They're made specifically for this, by the way. Okay, I'll give them a shout out. Vacuum pad, camera parts, and lens opener. Okay, this is what the front looks like. Uh, on the back, this is what it says. For the use of winding and opening the camera lens without any pits, of which normal camera lenses removers cannot be used. Also for removing the decorative cover of the rewind knob of film cameras. On and on and on. Okay, so. You find the one, right? And this is obviously too big for the roll of flex, right? So you find the one that's uh, close enough to the lens. Is this the one? Yeah. Okay. So. This is the lens we want to remove. The bottom one, right? And you take this. You take this. This is solid rubber, right? The grip is incredible. And you just take it and you fit it on the met not on the glass it goes on the metal part of the lens element putting the camera down on a flat surface and you hold it steady and you take this vacuum pad or rubber lens remover and you place it on there and you press down quite hard well first i should say you want to make sure you see how the lens right the focusing is out you want to make sure that it's all the way down. All right. Putting some force in a downward pressure. Not too much. Okay. You want to press it down. And as you turn it, whoop, it'll come out. You get it going. And then with your hand, you can unscrew it. Then you just start the cleaning process. You take your Q-tip. Right. I use this little bit of one drop of lens cleaner. Right. Liquid. I use the Zeiss. Here, I'll show you. I'm not sponsored by these. I'm not sponsored by anybody except for one person, CarmiteTaverna.com. He's our sponsor. All right, I use this Zeiss lens cleaner. Okay. Um, I get this on Amazon. I got the vacuum pad on Amazon as well. All right. So. You get this on Amazon, one drop on a Q-tip, and you start cleaning, okay? And it took this this lens, right? You can even see through it now. This lens, this ice lens took maybe 25 Q-tips to clean. Here's why. You put a drop on the Q-tip, you put a drop of the lens cleaner on the Q-tip, you go around, and you stop. You turn it over to the other side. One drop. And you go around. You stop. You throw it out. Because you don't want to start picking up any kind of grit and oil. And then just keep distributing it around and around. You take your time. You clean it. And then finally, after, like I said, 20 or 30 Q-tips, the lens is perfect. Now. Go to my online gallery, callmytaverna.com. Just put in Rolleiflex, and you'll see at least two examples of how the lens came out. There's two photographs there, and I think you'll be impressed. <laughs> okay, uh, we went 23 minutes, guys. Okay, do me a favor. Just go over here, hit the subscribe red button, please. Uh, give me a thumbs up. Uh, comment down below. Uh, email me any question you have about photography. Black and white photo at AOL.com. And visit, like I said, visit my online gallery, callmytaverna.com. And this has been photo class number 62. Um, so much has gone on this week, right? Over in Europe, you have the Ukraine situation. My friends in the UK have been dealing with two back-to-back -back storms. Um, from what I've read today in London, they're still having floods. I'm so sorry to hear that, guys. My friends out in the UK, my friends in Ukraine and Kiev. There's a lot going on, but we'll get through it. Okay, shout out again to Emilio Morinati 
uh, war photographer, press photographer, photojournalist for the AP. He's the chief. He is on the ground in Ukraine right now photographing uh, what's happening in Ukraine. And he puts it out on his Instagram and Twitter uh, very often. Go to his uh, Instagram account and you'll see up to the minute Associated Press photographs. Shout out to him, Emilio Morinati. All right, guys. See you on Photo Class 63.